What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 22nd Scikit-Learn with Python for machine learning with our investing example using a support vector machine or otherwise supervised learning tutorial video. Anyway, moving on. Uh, in our last video, what we did was we pulled this Yahoo Finance you know, current data, and we want to make a prediction based on this data and maybe find some stocks that we're interested in investing in. So with that, uh, we've got the data already pulled as in the last video, and now what we're ready to do is move um, forward and actually kind of build a, a data set now on that data. Our most recent data set was this one right here from Machine Learning Video 18. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that. I'm going to do a Control A, Control C. I'm going to bring it over here, Control A, Control V. Boom. Again, you might want to save that uh, Yahoo polling because uh, you could actually, in theory, run that script daily, monthly, yearly, whatever. So here we have uh, the building script, and now what we need to do is actually build, uh, modify this script a little bit. You know, my favorite thing to do. Uh, modify this slightly to handle the new format of, or the new, I guess, uh, formatting of the data. I'm already breaking the new format of the data basically right now it's not it's in a different kind of directory and stuff <laughs> and then we also we can't get like the stock prices from a year right we, we can't see into the future otherwise we wouldn't be doing machine learning we would just be investing so yeah we got to account for all that stuff so with that let's get started uh so first we're going to go ahead and we don't really need this path var anymore uh we could call this forward and uh, that'll be that. We'll scroll down here. We don't need either of these anymore. So just comment those out. And if you don't know how I'm doing that again, uh, you just highlight Alt 3 and it comments them all out. Moving on, we don't need anything about this current stock price or the current data frame that's irrelevant to our uh, interests. We also don't need this ticker list. Irrelevant yet again. But we do now need a file list, and we'll call this file list equal to the os.lister, and we want to list the contents of the directory forward because that is where I stored all of my uh, contents. So my the stuff that we just pulled for our forward, um, you know, real time, I suppose. Um, investing is in this directory forward. And we've got all these files here. So that's where the files are, and we want to access them, and each file is its own little ticker. So that's our file list. Now what we're going to say is for each dir in, I don't really want to change that, but for each dir in a file list, what do we want to do? And actually, I do want to change that. That's going to bother me. So what we can do is we can go Control C to copy that. Control H, which is the find and replace. We'll say each dir. We want to replace that with uh, each file because that's exactly what it is. Replace all, and that's that. Okay, that was going to bother me too much. So for each file in file list, each file equals os dot list uh, list dir. That's well, basically all this stuff is unnecessary, actually. So we will just comment that out. And in fact, I'm actually gonna delete this stuff. It's just not necessary and it's ugly to have a bunch of comments. And now instead we're gonna just say ticker equals each uh, file dot split by dot HTML. And we want the zeroth or the left side of that. And that will be the ticker, boom, done. Next we have uh, I was going to print ticker, but nah. Uh, we're going to say the full full file path equals uh, forward slash plus each underscore uh, file. And that's our full file path. And then we're going to say the source. And the source is basically the source code, right? So source equals open full file path. Uh, with the intention to read and might actually not be necessary. <laughs> uh, whatever, we'll continue on <laughs> with the intention to read and then dot read. Uh, that's a little redundant though. That's okay. Okay, so that's our source. Now, uh, we 
can leave that, I suppose. That's probably also redundant, but that's okay. Um, this is all fine. Uh, the date stamp, we can get that. We don't really need to, though. Um, yeah. Basically, all we need is... We'll just comment this out. Uh, or, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold. Everybody just wait a second. What is happening? <laughs> so, we need this. Mm, we don't want four file. We basically want... So, this is two tabs over. This is where my brain breaks every freaking time, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. A weak brain. Moving down, we're trying to find this except. Where is it? That's this one. Okay, so that's a lot. Okay, so. Uh, all the way up to this. Now you can press control in the opening square brackets, two tab over there. Uh, okay. Uh, that's embarrassing. Anyway, so, so all we need are the values. We don't care about anything else, right? We don't care about we we do want the ticker right we need this and this but then when it comes to the rest of this stuff we just need the values we don't need any freaking thing else so we can actually get rid of the ga gathering of the s p 500 stuff the stock stuff all the way down to and even this stuff all the way down to but right before we do the not available calculations so all of that boom delete not necessary Okay, and this try can remain. I think we, I think we might do this without any errors, guys. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, so this is where we're probably going to get our errors, but uh, we'll handle it. So date, we just don't care, right? The date is the date of the poll, so we'll know always what the date is. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. We don't care about the Unix. We do care about the ticker. We don't care about the price. We don't care about the percentage change. The S&P 500 nonsense. Don't care. Don't care. So all the way down to basically distance from the beginning to all the way down to distance besides ticker, just a bunch of not availables. <laughs> okay. And then finally, do, 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 status again, not available. We just don't care uh, about that because we're not we're not privy to that information at this point. Now, finally, df to, to CSV. Instead of this nonsense, we were gonna we're gonna call this forward underscore sample dot CSV, but we're gonna say no underscore NA or is this with NA? First, we'll do no NA, right? That's what we have right here, and then we'll do with NA. Uh, and then finally, key stats. We called this uh, what did we call this forward? Forward. So forward, save, run it. Come on, man, we got this, no errors. Let's do it. No one wants to see these errors. Should be pretty fast. It's only, there we go, okay, so it says it's done. Let's check it, let's check it. Pull this up here. What are you doing? Here it is. Well, it's 120 kilobytes. That might be right. Pull this bad boy right on over. Um, okay, so we see some not availables, but that's totally fine because those are the ones that we we slapped in. Uh, so let's good. Let's go ahead and save one now with not available. So no NA. God, I can't believe we made it this far, guys. This is a good thing. With NA, now we allow up to 15. Uh, and just for the record, these not availables don't affect this, right? This is called first, and then we input our own not availables. Uh, so that one, and we'll run one more here, and that should, this one might take a little long. Well, no, it shouldn't take really that much longer. Um, and yeah, this video is hitting 10 minutes, so I'll probably cut off this one as well. Uh, in, the, in the next video, we'll actually, um, run the tests against this one, but let's go ahead and check this file. Slightly larger, but not by much. Okay, so we've got that, and now I wanna talk about moving into the for, uh, you know, moving forward, moving into the forward. 
So in the next video, we've got this data set, and then what we'll do is we'll train on the previous data set, then we'll call upon this data set after we've, you know, we've got the training in memory, and then we'll call upon this data set, and then we'll kind of predict only based on this data set. So really we can train on the entire previous data set, and then we can call upon this data set and make some predictions. So that's what we'll, we'll do. And uh, we might find that we either get too many or too few uh, predictions. If we get too few, that's okay. In theory, you shouldn't get a new prediction every day, but also in theory, we should be we should get. Uh, say our prediction is um, Apple. Okay, our prediction for Apple should not. I mean, every day we should be getting Apple. <laughs> if, if we have like a bunch of days where we're not getting Apple predicted, then we shouldn't be in Apple. So anyway, uh, that's that. So. Uh, and that might actually be a, a way of moving forward as far as the stop loss is concerned. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's not like stop loss in, in terms of price. It's really stop loss in terms of you know fundamental features of these companies. So if you know if let's say four weeks goes by and given the features, it says, hey, this is still not a good investment, then we can get out. We don't necessarily have to wait until the full year is up, something like that. Anyway. Uh, let's hop to the next video, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.